number 17. Please welcome the technical officials. The umpire of the match, Rohana de Silva, Sri Lanka. And the Zubijats, Kelvin Martin, Barbados. So the first of our five matches completed and the home fans very happy after that first match will they be happy after the second as well because it does uh, feature indonesians gideon marcus fernaldi and kevin sanjaya sukamoljo up against the world number ones lee young day and Yu young sung then we'll have women's doubles and then men's singles featuring the two-time olympic champion lin dan and then the last of our matches, Simon Awal, who was in four consecutive finals here. Three times she won the title, uh, looking uh, to beat the young Indonesian, Fitriani. And now, please welcome from Korea. The world number ones, the former champions here, won the title two years ago, They're breaking Indonesian hearts at the final stage two years ago because they beat Mohammed Hassan and Hendra Setia won. But here, the youngsters, Gideon Marcus Fernaldi and Kevin Sanjaya. Sukamoljo. Oh, what an exciting young pair they are. Last week in the world ranking, they went up to a career high 12 and they swapped places with a very well known Indonesian pair, Pratama and Suwadi. So now this young Indonesian pair are the second ranked Indonesians behind the world champions. Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan. So that a big status for them. Of course, they uh, played and were nominated as the third pair, third rank pair in the recent Thomas Cup campaign. And as the third pair, uh, they didn't play all matches because there's only two men's doubles in Thomas Cup. And of course, Indonesia lost in the Thomas Cup final to Denmark. First time ever winners Denmark of the Thomas Cup in their ninth final, having lost eight previous finals. Well, here's Yu Yang Sung, 29 year old from Gyeongnam, near Gyeongju. World number one. Well, they're only number four on the Super Series standings, I can tell you. Three Super Series played prior to this. This is the fifth event of the year. And three semi-finals. As indeed, they were semi-finalists here last year. Lost out to their teammates, Go oh, Suk Hyung oh, and Shin Bet Cho. And of course, it is that Korean pair who waits the winner of the second round encounter. Well, in their first match, the Koreans beat Pratama and Suwadi, the Indonesian pair, who this pair have just climbed above in the world ranking. Well, Sukumoljo is actually 20 years of age. In fact, in a couple of months, he's going to be 21. 
Horn in Bangiwangi. Gideon Marcus Finaldi. 25 years of age, born in Jakarta. And he did reach a career high of eight with Marcus Kido, with whom he reached the quarter-final here two years ago. And of course, with Marcus Kido, won the French Super Series as qualifiers. Well, this will be the third meeting between the two pairs. The previous two occasions have been won by the Koreans. And both in two games. Last time they met was in the quarterfinal of the Hong Kong Super Series last year. Players, just 38 players. minutes. Uh, umpire, Ryan De Silva. Sri Lanka. Kelvin Martin from Barbados is our service judge. with the head-to-head -head and with their world number one status that the Koreans should be favourite for this but the Indonesians playing in Indonesia are very tough cookies aren't they because with the home fans support they all seem to raise their games yeah they do and uh, at least have this match as a bit closer than um, a two-game match we saw in, uh, in Hong Kong, and 16 and 11. I think we could definitely uh, be treated with a deciding game here. Kevin Sanjay, Sukamulio, Marcus Fernando Gideon, Indonesia. Marcus Fernando Gideon to serve to Lee Yongdae, Lowell. Play. the Indonesians far side of the court as we look down. Now, if you haven't watched this young Indonesian pair before, keep an eye on Kevin Sanjay at Sukumodal. He's the man about to receive serve. He's so fast. He's one of those players that goes for outrageous shots that you don't even think are possible. He's <laughs> great to watch. I bet it from a coach's point of view, you probably get a little bit frustrated sometimes with players like that, but I love it. Yeah, but I think so. Uh, the coaches do as well because, I mean, if you are to win on a world stage, you've got to have something special. You've yeah. got to have a player who dares to go for um, the shots that uh, are a little bit more um, clever or uh, risky than other players do. You can't One. just play safe. No. Um, actually, I think uh, Sukumulio reminds me a lot of uh, Zhang Siwei, the young Chinese player who's also uh, making a, um, a case for himself in, in World Badminton right now. Very, very fast players, both of them. Yeah. A very interesting here in this event, Steve, that Shang Si Wei, who we've just mentioned, has got a new men's doubles partner in the form of Liu Kai. Yeah. So Liu Chung oh, apparently only playing the mixed doubles. I wonder if that's a sign that uh, they are going to be selected ahead of uh, Xu Chen and Ma Jin for the Olympics, but uh, we'll have to wait a while to see who the Chinese team will select for that. Yeah. Quick. Look at it. Covering everything at the net. 
And I thought that the Indonesians really had a breakthrough at the beginning of the year, Steen. Two titles, they won the Malaysian Grand Prix gold, uh, but more importantly for their status, their first ever Super Series title in India. And I think that's made a big difference to them yeah. psychologically. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, to, to win a Super Series that's, that's sort of um, stamps your mark in, in your career and, and you, you can in, in many ways you can be satisfied with your career should you not reach higher than a super series uh, win if you don't win medals for your country of course that, that might be the ultimate goal but uh, if you win a super series you definitely had a fantastic level in uh, in badminton i think we saw during the uh, thomas cup um, just a week ago, we saw how much the European title meant to the Dane, Victor Axelsen, in uh, in uh, sort of leading his country, yeah, my country as well, in the, in the first men's singles. Uh, he was um, a totally different player. Yeah. So let's see if uh, the Indonesians can capitalize on that and, and the home advantage here. Well, Lee Yong Day has been in five finals here at the Indonesia Open. Four men's doubles, one mixed doubles. Three times he's won the men's doubles because I've mentioned that he and his partner of today won two years ago, but he also won in 2009 and 2012 with Jung Jae Sung. Yeah, that, that's... That's actually um, more or less remarkable results because we sometimes tend to think of the Koreans as uh, a bit defensive um, men's doubles players. But the thing is that they just have a really, really solid defense. But of course, they can play uh, the attack as well. Complete doubles players. Oh, it's called out. There's yeah. A, yeah, there's a challenge here. Challenge from the Koreans. Oh, I thought the umpire was a little late to raise his left arm as a sign of um, the challenge has been made. on the far back line from where you're playing to make the challenge. No, it's going to be out. Nine judgment, right. Turn. Oh, not the best of serves. Well, it came off his racket, surely. Yeah. That touched Lee Yong Day's racket. Umpire yes. didn't call it. Indonesians complained. Well, that's extraordinary. Oh, that's drifted a long way long. Some side drift as well there. Yeah, I thought in the first of our matches, Steen, yeah. I thought as we looked down on the court that uh, the drift sideways is going from left to right. Yeah, I agree. 
Goodness, well, that's quick movement and quick to see the opportunity from Yu Young Sung. Oh, goodness me, that was good play. It's hovering. Look at that. Super. Of course, that was. A sign that the Koreans, they know the Indonesians are reluctant to lift, and that's why Yu Yong Song could take such a big chance. Almost standing on the service line. Good call, yeah. good call. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question it was wide. Indonesians. I can't remember which court they played on yesterday. The Koreans, that is, when they played against the other Indonesian pair, Pratama and Suwadi. Well, you were saying all the courts are different with their drift, and then yeah. you get used to where it's going on one court doesn't necessarily apply. Maybe you're on a different court the next day. Oh yes, good work again from you, young son. Ben on. Oh, back level. The leap in the air opened his shoulders, looked as if he was going to thunder down the smash. Look at this. And then that delicate little disguise drop. Superb. Yeah. And a nice way to go to the mid game interval. Look, we've always talked about how deep they are in their defensive stances. Yeah. But look at the disguise on that from Sukum Old and I think the placement towards the sideline was also important because had it been placed in the middle, I think Joe might have caught that one. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Court. to try and let it come out of part of the tumble. Yeah, they actually played on this middle court yesterday, <coughs> the, uh, the Koreans. Uh, so they should be aware of the conditions here. Yeah. The only thing is that um, we had a slight uh, rain delay yesterday. We had an almost tropical rainstorm, and uh, one of the courts were unusable for um, half an hour or so, and that caused some changes. But uh, I still think they should be playing on their designated court. Long. Well played. Good defense where the Koreans work themselves towards a better and better position. 
They're not lifting high, trying to lift as flat as possible. Can come forward. Very, very difficult to survive in this hole with high lifts. timing on that interception had to be perfect okay, thank you. goes down on the floor couple of defense look at this Unbelievable. how on earth did he play that magnificent Oh, terrible service, but uh, it tricked 15, 14, Kevin Sukamulio. I think he cut underneath the shuttle, and I think it started to tumble. Yeah. And because of the tumble, he couldn't control the reply. Oh, we really need to see that again. Yeah, I think it would have gone much too short, but... Um, Here we go. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's upside down when he tries to it hit is. it. Now, as long as you're not hitting the feathers before the cork, if you can make the shuffle tumble by hit cutting under the cork, then that's legal. That's legal. The question is whether he did touch the cork first. And we can see actually from the position where we are that the service goes a little bit left to right. It's like it, it, it turns a little bit. So there's definitely a whole lot of... Uh, twist in it hits the side of the cork uh, it's well yeah. worked by the Koreans uh, and that was three quick points and and that might be decisive of this um, first game Service. That's a very good service. Oh, it's now five straight points. 18, 14. 13, 14 down they were. Yeah. And of course, we, 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 this game isn't finished yet, but you shouldn't be able to survive in these surroundings. You shouldn't be able to sur survive a streak of uh, five points against the world number one. just lost their way haven't they yeah. Indonesians and, and that raises the question even if you feel that you've sort of been wronged in the service situation should you use mental energy on discussing it with the referee or whatever or should you just see it as one of the uh, events one of the passing events of a badminton match and just play on yeah it's always a diff difficult um, choice to make but um, you've got to ask yourself um, back in practice, what what's, what suits you best? 
Yeah, well, it's, I mean, this, this is what we mean when we talk about players having experience and, and the experience is not allowing those sort of incidents to, to affect you adversely. And it's also often a, a sign of who is uh, more confident on court. The more confident ones seem to not bring up cases like this that yeah. just play on. Yeah. I mean, when have we ever seen an umpire suddenly change the ruling and say, oh, yes, that was a mistake in the service. I'm glad you pointed it out to me. No, exactly. Well, there's game point opportunities here, and they convert their first 21-15. 18 minutes of play. Well, I hope the Indonesians can learn from that because ever since that serve, which they thought was a fault, but it wasn't called, I have my doubts because I think he chops underneath the cork. And there we go, confirmation, opening game to the former champions and current world number ones, Lee Yong Day and Yu Young Sun. Eight of the last nine points. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really feeling that confident about my prediction now for a, for a three-game match because I felt that maybe um, the best chance of uh, the Indonesians of taking a game away from the Koreans was on the far side of the court. Um, now they have to be really careful with their lifts, but then, of course, they have no intention of lifting, so... Yeah. Um, they get a little bit more help in their attack. Here is uh, Harry Pamadi is uh, offering some advice to Gideon Finaldi. And Paulus, I think, the other Indonesian coach. I'm not sure that's Paulus. So, second game, Koreans having taken the first. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's going wide. The side drift. Yeah. And you're right, Jill, it wasn't uh, Paulus, um, the coach in the yellow T-shirt. I just checked with uh, our colleagues from uh, Trans 7 Indonesia. It's uh, Ariono. I do think it's important the Indonesians really settle at the start of this second game because they were definitely up skittled at the end of that first. Yeah. I'm just going to blow your theory to pieces, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one athlete I can think of there's always an exception to the rule, so isn't there? When you talk about a player yeah, getting upset about what they believe is a wrong decision and so on, and it's a, a sign that they, you know, if if it if you just let it go by, then you've got confidence. It shows that a player's got confidence. The only athlete I can think of that actually played better with a bit of an argument, Mr. John McEnroe. Yeah, there's actually. Um a Danish female handballer as well. She also um, played better when she was a bit upset. And I think it, it's uh, it's also we, we can get into a, a whole uh, personality discussion here. But but um, 
<laughs> if it's a trait that you feel that you over and over and over again in your life been sort of cheated and so on, then you learn to cope with it and, and, and sort of get the best out in you. If you feel that it's unfair and, and it's a, a sudden event that's it's something strange, uh, unusual is happening, that you're being treated unfairly, I think you have difficulties uh, coping with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, some athletes, they, they're really, really good at um, getting fired up by those kind of um, situations. Oh, look at that defense. That whole rally, the momentum was turned with that wonderful defensive block across court. Came from Lee Yong Day. Look at that. And that last one went under the net. Yeah, not that you can tell from that overhead camera. There it comes. <laughs> moment I was thinking there's a huge gap on the Indonesian side of the court. Oh. Yeah, why didn't they hit that one cross court? There was a huge gap there. Yeah. landed in but obviously we're even further away than the players this near side of the court and obviously the Koreans were jolly close to it. so far, one in the opening game, one just now, yeah. both of them have been wrong. And the same, it's actually against the same linesman, and he's he's got them covered. Yeah. He's 2-0 up. Oh, good shot. Brilliant backhand. difficult to keep that one straight yeah. made it look easy but that's a difficult shot I can assure you and there's a little bit of side drift as well not that it takes oh, makes a whole lot of impact on a, on a shot like that it's more like the lifts the higher lifts but still can take the white oh my goodness that, that was not entirely the side drift. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a defense. What a touch he has from below the tape, Lee Young Day. This man did everything right. Backhand shot from uh, oh. Lee Young Day. Oh. Seven, five. Well, the line judge was hesitant on that occasion. 
but you helped him. <laughs> helped told him <laughs> how he should judge uh, How he should judge call. Yeah, I agree with you, Steen. No, no warning from the umpire, which I find odd. They have to be careful now, the Indonesians. Yeah. Oh, he, maybe he broke a string and that's why he missed that shot. Yeah, but five straight points for the world number ones. But, but this is where I feel that, that the Indonesians, they, um, <laughs> they get a little bit sad, so to speak, here. And, oh, wow, well, aren't we getting any points and so on? Wow. Well, the level uh, of Eight concentration and the intensity for the Koreans, they're more stable. Yeah. Um, throughout a match. Yeah, there's another example of yeah. the sadness and the, and the frustration. Look at this body language afterwards. Yeah, that's not so good. Seven straight points now. Oh, what a great deception from uh, Kevin Sanjaya. to the mid-game interval with a five-point advantage. And once again, eight of nine points. But this is where the young Indonesians have really got to get themselves together mentally. And you saw from the early stages of the, of the match, they've got the technicalities, they've yeah. got the uh, variation of shot. Well, they've just lost their way. And, and the important thing now is to, to keep the patience. You, when you're five points behind and, and the game down, you sometimes want to score points quickly. Whoa. He lost his uh, stance there. Fernaldi. Yeah, you, you sometimes want to, to uh, sort of uh, uh, catch your opponents quick. And if you do that, if you don't have the sufficient patience, then the opposite happens, that you just lose points even quicker. about the way he sort of does this little pirouette <laughs> there. Look at that. Oh, yes. 
that was so incredibly quick. Not only fleet of foot, but quick to see the opportunity. Look, yeah. he's going forward already. Well, I said they needed to get themselves together mentally. They've done precisely that. Well done to them. Would you believe it? Five points since the mid-game interval, and all five points the Indonesians in the back level. And now it's the lead. want the shuffle change, the Indonesians say no. But you got what he came for, the little interruption of uh, the run of points for Fernaldi and Sukumulio. Yeah. And after that little interruption to the flow of play, they get their desired result at the end of the rally, too. Oh, my goodness. That's gone wrong. A great, spectacular dive from Gideon Marcus Vinaldi. Look at that, full lengths. Yeah. Very hard to control that shot when you're so much out of balance. Yeah. And playing with the drift and... Uh, yeah, he put it long. Very, very important to stay in balance in these windy conditions. Stay in balance short racket movements, no big arm swings if you can avoid it. It takes your timing a little bit off the shot. Oi! Just hit, hit the tunnel of the net, that shot there. That one. Yeah, they did awfully well to get that one back, yeah. the young guy. We often see um, returners hit the net in the service return. And that, that's actually something the players, they practice. They practice the return where you hit the tape and it tumbles over. So what you're saying is it's not luck, it's, it's practice skill. Perhaps a bit of luck, but the more they practice, the luckier they get. Yeah. this near side of the court I guess you have to be awfully careful with these flat fast exchanges yeah. because of the drift liable to do exactly what it did there go long exactly if you're a little bit um, 
If you're a little bit behind in the in the flat rallies, you've got to take the speed out of the shot. Yeah, good call. Good call. Oh, service for cold there. It's the first of the match, isn't it? Yeah. I think also the first flick service of the match. tendency in my opinion that it gets harder and harder for the players to to flick yeah they get called a lot uh, and, but rightfully so we could see but um, what if it had been a short service would he be called then yeah yeah good judgment yeah that's the drift that ends up landing a long way long We saw on some of the outer courts, in order to control the drift, they sit the players, they lift very, very high um, up under the roof because it's so hard to hit a, a straight falling shuttle. So you can survive even though you don't have the correct length on your lift. on their feet, some of them looking a little precarious there. That's a long drop down from where they were standing and jumping up and down. Got a little bit too greedy. Yo Yong Song could have just blocked it. the Koreans getting the initiative um, on the service return. Same round the head position from Finaldi. Two points away, the Koreans from securing their place in the quarter final. Was a good interception from Yu Young Sun. Yeah, a 
wanting the court mopped before the first of their match point opportunities. had a little slip in concentration just after the interval, the Koreans. Otherwise, I think they've played a, a really, really good match. Made it difficult for Sukumoljo and uh, Fernaldi. It was the drop shot that did the damage. It was. And the Koreans, once again, playing themselves into difficulty because of the uh, defensive stance being so deep in court. And especially the drop shots towards Yo Young Song because he doesn't have exactly the same touch as Lee Young Dae has. So, so that opens up some possibilities either for another drop shot or for a smash aimed at Yo as well. Well. Two of the three match points have come and gone. Just one more remains. Can the Indonesians save a third? concur with Steen, apart from that very slight slip in concentration after the mid-game interval. I think the Koreans looking very sharp indeed. I said right at the start, it's never easy playing against home players here in the store of Sanayan. Look at that. Why they just put the pressure on. Keep on the attack. Take the shuttle early with those pushes down the sidelines. And that's exactly what the Koreans did. So safely through to the quarterfinal. 21-15, 21-19. And the quarterfinal will be a repeat of the 2014 World Championship final. Ni Yong Day and Yu Young Sung through to the final. The 2014 champions here against the defending champions Go Sung Hyun and Shin Bek Cho. That's tomorrow's quarter final.
So our next match is women's doubles. Vivian Hu and Wu Ki Wei of Malaysia up against the Indonesians, the number two seeds, Gracia Poli and Nidia Krasinda Mahaswari. Well, obviously, with the Indonesians being the number two seeds, uh, this must be the bottom quarter of the draw, which, unfortunately, we're looking...